Hello everyone. Uh, so we are back with uh, Vi uh, for a new episode of uh, Meet Our Users. It's been a long time. And today we have uh, Raghav with us. He's been a long-term subscriber. And uh, anytime he asks questions during the market talk, uh, it's relevant. Anytime he asks a question also on Twitter, it's relevant. And uh, most of the time, when you ask a question, it's the questions I'm asking myself. So we thought uh, it would be good to have him uh, introduce himself, uh, introduce uh, how he uses uh, MFR, and maybe give some insight uh, to other users about how to improve their uh, trading. So Raghav, how are you? And can you tell us a bit about yourself? Yeah, um, thanks, Rafael and why I had I chanced upon this service about uh, two years ago, and um, I started to really like it. Um, and I used started to use the MFR portal a lot uh, in the last one year since the we got more and more functionalities that in MFR, specifically having all the indicators within the uh, trading view or other. Um, uh, trading um, charting platforms. Uh, this has been a great boost to my uh, charting experience and uh, uh, getting technical analysis done. Uh, in the last one or two years, what uh, I have really learned is um, trust your charts and uh, trust your charts with them. There's like so much noise in the market about different things going on. What I've learned is that whatever um, we see on the chart whatever indicators um, going on and off that we see on MFR are really working and I have started to trust them a lot uh, during the last one or two years. Um, just for more background, I am an amateur trader and I do it as a hobby and try to make some money on the side. But um, uh, because of that, I I'm not plugged to a screen all day long and uh, um, I do mostly swing trades and mostly I look at um, daily and weekly and monthly. I don't look at intraday a lot um, and I think MFR is really good in um, all those um, on all those time frames. Yeah. So yeah, you, you have mentioned that uh, you have two accounts uh, for trading. One is for swing trades, another one is for options and um, <clears throat> uh, the swing trade accounts that you have mentioned you said it was a long only account mm -hmm. and um, so for instance uh, uh, how do you manage this uh, this account uh, with uh, mfr regarding uh, trends range and maybe the scripts that you have access to how do you behave yeah. with uh, the signals yeah, great. Yeah, that's a great point. So they, they both the accounts behave differently. So the, for the long-term account, um, I try to see uh, when there is a, depends on what kind of regime we are in. Um, for example, in the bullish market, um, we would like to buy the dips. So if there's a dip happening um, in for a long-term account, I want to look at um, when does the, a particular instrument become bullish um, and when do we have a bottom so basically two things um, so for the bottom there are buy indicators that um, MFR provides um, they are not exact but uh, they are pretty good within a day or two or three and uh, I try to um, do a dollar cost average when we see those kind of uh, indicators coming with the uh, with small um, with small um, uh, sizing of, of my portfolio. Uh, and I add more when I see that, uh, that the instrument has particularly become more bullish. Um, this is specifically more important when it, uh, you look at um, multiple indicators, uh, especially if the, it's closer to the long-term bottom range or when it is, uh, the momentum is heavily oversold. Uh, I've started recently using the matrix indicator as well, which is very, very good. I really like it. Um, so all those uh, indicators, specifically on a weekly 
um, you know, looking at a combination of daily and weekly that provide a very good entry uh, on for the long only accounts. Um, and then exit is basically based on when the it's heavily oversold or it starts to break trade and trend uh, and looking at those things. Um, in addition to these MFR, I also look at Williams percentage R, which is, provides an additional indicator, another technical indicator. For my options account, it's, um, it is, uh, I know it's options, but I still use it as a, um, a swing. So usually my options are one, two months out. And um, um, I, I use similar, similar methodology, but I try to um, do more aggressive um, plays there, uh, especially uh, things like oversold bounces, any, many more plays to uh, play the different types of momentum plays, etc. Yeah. And uh, among the scripts, because I know you are very fond of uh, the scripts we release, um, which ones are the ones you use the uh, are the ones you use the most, and uh, maybe uh, why they are the most uh, potent in your opinion? Yeah, uh, I am a big fan of uh, two two indicators. The first one is the MFR trend. This is. The only indicator, if anyone wants to know how to go risk on a risk off, this is basically the main indicator anyone would want to know. It's so simple. If uh, it's a, basically a yellow band, if the instrument is above it, it's bullish. If, if it's neutral, things are changing. If it's below, it's bearish. And uh, that's all you need to know about any instrument to begin with. Um, Previously, I used to look at many other ways like moving averages, 20-day, 50-day, and so on, and try to gauge based on that whether an instrument is bullish and so on. But uh, all this trend, this uh, MFR trend is basically, I don't know how it works behind the scenes, but it's basically, that's the only signal that I need. I don't need to really look at uh, the different types of moving averages. Uh, the slight variation of that is basically the volatility trade and trend, which I really love. Um, most of the indicators that you um, see in the um, see in the in the, in the, in, the, in, the, in the charting platforms are based on ab moving averages, etc. This is most uh, mostly uh, related to the volatility. And how the the volatility of um, of a particular instrument is varying, and we can see the trends and the trades of the volatility, which I believe is like really really great to look at. Um, these have provided me very very good indicators as to when the there is a change in regime happening, when is volatility increasing or the volatility decreasing. Uh, and when you use these two as the main ways instead of uh, drawing lines on the chart, um, they are a much better way of doing trading. Yeah. Very nice. <clears throat> uh, if anyone is interested by the uh, MFR trend uh, uh, script and also the trade and trend of volatility script, you can watch uh, the market talks we do with Vi and Ted uh, so that you can discover it. Uh, it's also available for uh, our elite subscribers. So I would encourage you to subscribe if you are interested uh, to get access to this. Vai, do you have any questions for Raga? Uh, first, uh, maybe it's not a question, but a very good uh, uh, point about uh, starting uh, uh, your uh, analysis by looking into a trend and actually the goal of the MFR trend was uh, actually uh, it's very simple and I have this belief that uh, in trading uh, complicated things uh, they don't work and uh, in order for us uh, to um, stand a chance and to have a higher probability of uh, making better uh, de de decisions uh, starting from a trend is very uh, uh, good way uh, to do that, and uh, uh, of course, never fighting the trend. Uh, from my my 
question would be maybe almost the same that you, Rafael, did before, but uh, I wanted to know, for example, how you are, uh, when it comes to MFR, uh, how you are, let's say, morning uh, process or weekend uh, process looks like. So let's say it's a new day or a new week and you open uh, uh, MFR website. What you are looking for, maybe are, are you writing some things down or, or what are the most important uh, pieces of info information uh, apart from the indicators? And basically, I just wanted to see your uh, thought process when... Um, you approach the markets, uh, whether it's a new week or a new day, and you log into MFR and to... Yeah, yeah, that's a great question. So most of my analysis happens on a weekend because I'm more like a swing trader. Uh, I do some analysis every day, but uh, the majority of that happens over the weekend. The first and foremost thing that I check on the MI factor range is the correlations what regime are we in so are we are we in like a deflation regime where um, the the equities and the bonds go opposite or are we in a reflation regime where they go up or down together um other after once i've established that i started to look at uh, the opex cycle we are in so usually um understanding what opex cycle we are in uh, especially when a uh, specific monthly or quarterly OPEX is nearby, it can lead to uh, a way the, how the gamma and the uh, one and charm works. So understanding what can that options market have an impact on the equity is very important. The third thing I start to look at is basically the all the economic and macro events uh, and earnings events that are happening. Um, and I try, based on the, my macro research, I try to gauge um, whether um, that will have a particular impact on the bonds or on the currency. So, for example, if there is a CPI event, which is very famous now in the trading world, uh, what is my view on the trade on CPI? I look at my macro research. If I expect CPI to um, go hot or go cool, Will what kind of impact it will have on the bonds and what kind of correlation regime we are in with the bonds. So if we are in um, deflation regime, for example, that we were in the last two, three months, CPI going down would mean the bonds will go up and it will have might have a negative impact on the equities. So once I have um, that kind of broader context work done, then I started to look at individual instruments. And then individual instruments, I start to look at um, what their um, um, MFR trend is, volatility, where, which, and where in the curve are the volatility trend and trade, uh, where in the matrix we are, um, and um, what, are the, uh, what are the plays over there. So that's, that's, uh, that's how I break it down uh, into, by looking at a holistic picture. Um, I would love to do more on the Hearst signal. I uh, The Hearst signal doesn't change much over time that I've seen. So once I've kind of know something is bullish, it kind of works with the Hearst. But uh, I wish I could use the Hearst signal more in my MFR analysis. Yeah, yeah, yeah you're right. The Hearst uh, signal is not supposed to change very often. Actually, if it would change very often, that would be... Uh, something abnormal and a uh, thing to watch yeah uh, and uh, as a options trader myself uh, of course i would be really uh, interested to hear how you uh, approach mfr uh, for trading options how you use the data from mfr in your options portfolio and even uh, you can touch on what strategies you use are you uh, more of a, a volatility Seller, buyer, are you market neutral? Yeah, we, we would love to hear that. Yeah, as an options trader uh, and a swing trader, I um, I try to keep my options very, very simple. Uh, I know there are so many strategies available, butterflies, etc., con iron condors. Um, I try to just buy calls and puts. And um, the risk management that I use is basically just buying more time. I really, really um, buy it uh, way, 
like one or two months out. Um, when I start to look at when some particular signal change is happening, for example, uh, I see that volatility is trade in trend signal, and I see that there is a this the the curve is kind of it was something like this, and now it's coming down. So basically, the volatility is coming down. Um, in this example, let's say the volatility trade is above the trend that, and it's the volatility started to come down. This it's curving down which means that volatility is expected to come down. Now, eventually, if the, the instrument becomes really bullish in volatility terms, that trade would actually break the, uh, the trend as well, and it will continue going down. Now, in between, there might be ups and downs because it won't be in a single line. It might, might bounce off trend. It might do its own gyrations before it really happens. So I try to... Um, get an entry around those things. Now, this is obviously in conjunction with many other indicators. Uh, you, I would look at matrix. I would look at um, the uh, the momentum, the YMOMO indicator, if it's heavily oversold. And I, using a conjunction of all those indicators, I try to get an entry for, um, for in this example, volatility is trending down. So, like, for example, call option. And my risk management is... Uh, um, take it much further out in time, uh, two months out, and wait for the trend change to happen. Now, opposite will happen in uh, when you're trying to short an instrument. Basically, the, I'm expecting volatility to hit um, a certain level on the minimum, uh, may, on maybe on the daily, and I'm expecting it to bounce from there. So that's how I use it. Um, very simple option strategy is calls and puts. Yeah. And... Uh... You buy more, uh, more often. You buy uh, at the money, out of the money, or 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 levels based on ranges, or how you choose the options to trade. So there, there are two things that that I do. Um, one is uh, sometimes I base it on the short term MFR range. Uh, it's slightly out of money. Um, I do that, and the other is basically I'm if I'm expecting a very big. Uh, rally, for example, I will buy two or three or five percent out, and then keep on rolling those options uh, as if the rally continues. Yeah. I remember interesting, you, interesting. I remember you nailed the, the move in Tesla using the trade and trend indicator. I think it was in June. In mid June, you sent me a message and you said, uh, "Look, uh, Tesla is shifting on your trade and trend indicator. I'm taking a position." And uh, Behold, uh, uh, what happened was Tesla went from uh, like uh, high 170s to uh, 270 in the span of uh, what one month. Mm -hmm. so you, I mean, looking at the trade and trend indicator, it was a perfect entry and the perfect way to use the the script, especially considering how Tesla behaves when there is uh, this kind of volatility regime shift. Yeah, 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 that was a very good entry. And and you brought up a very good point, uh, Rafael. Um, I think the volatility uh, profile for every instrument is very different. So it's very important to go back in time and try to see the curves and, and how that profile is varying uh, in the past. So, uh, and I learned from you, like you can set minimums and maxes and uh, for example, when it tries to, the volatility trade is trying to break the trend, sometimes it bounces. And it, sometimes you can even look at how many bounces it does, one or two or three as well. So the, there's uh, the back testing and trying to understand the profile in the past is very important. And that's what I did for Tesla. Um, I saw that uh, the volatility is trending down. It's about to um, cross the trend. And it, that was in conjunction with it being bullish on the MFR trend. So when those things happen, uh, it can lead to a big move upwards. Yeah. For example, currently I know you and I are wa are watching uh, Bitcoin because uh, yes, it's a, it's actually exhibiting as a kind of pattern you want to see in a, in a shift in terms of uh, trade and trend behavior. So. Uh, Let's see. Maybe we get an entry uh, near uh, yes. this trade. That would be ideal. Yes, I'm looking forward to it. Uh, and uh, just from a macro research, I know that Bitcoin behaves 
uh, bullish whenever there is a lot of liquidity in the market. Uh, I'm not an expert in that. All I hear is, all I need to know is more liquidity or less liquidity. And we know that there is a liquidity being thrown in the market right now by Feds, by China and everyone. Um, and uh, given the macro environment, I'm expecting Bitcoin to go up. Now, now timing the entry is very hard and that's what I'm using MFR for. And uh, I'm seeing that uh, the things that you mentioned in the previous podcast uh, or the video was like uh, it's the the Bitcoin has tried to grow bullish many times in the last few months, and, but it has failed every time. Uh, and you specifically gave what to look for when when that trend is changing. So again, um, Bitcoin is bullish again. It is doing some pullbacks right now, but the main thing that has happened is it has broken the daily minimum on the volatility uh, uh, level. So that is an indicator. Now the idea is to get entry. I think uh, we have to see certain things happen, like you mentioned. We want to the the uh, instrument to bounce at certain lines, the trade and trend. And once that when that happens, uh, I'm looking forward to build some positions and maybe going DJ with some uh, options as well. Yeah, you and I both. <laughs> and um, yeah, I added the new scripts, uh, a new script recently, uh, Matrix. And uh, have you find it uh, useful? How do you, did you integrate this one uh, into your process, for instance? Yes, I, I really love that script. I, I previously, for my kind of matrix, I used to use... Uh, um, uh, like MACD, um, which is uh, um, not, which is which provides certain good entries. It's not really good for exits. Um, and um, I think momentum, uh, this uh, matrix overall is a much better um, uh, indicator than MACD. Yeah. Especially this version, uh, I've seen other matrix versions. This one also has some blue lines which you mentioned till that the volatility is increasing um, or there's uh, some mix in play, um, which, uh, which tells me that, you know, there's more further downside and I, I, which is a good indicator to look for when making sure that you try, when you're trying to buy the dip. Yeah. It's, uh, <clears throat> uh, the, what you see is actually the big sticks formula expressed in a different way. So it's a redundancy from the um, a volatility signal but expressed in another way. And the big difference is that you have, uh, yeah, it turns blue when there is very high volatility. So it, it can help you if you are trying to, let's say, try to buy the dip. Is there more downside coming or not? Uh, is this a uh, sell-off to be bought? Should I wait? So yeah, that was the idea of adding that to, to the more like um, momentum uh, aspect of it. Um, yeah. Vai, you you are thinking about something else? Uh, yeah, I was on mute. Uh, yeah, I, I'm I'm thinking about switching the direction uh, more to the uh, risk management, uh, which is, as uh, some of you know, is uh, what I always talk about. <laughs> Uh, so, so because uh, uh, I believe that when it comes to not uh, intraday trading but uh, more of a active portfolio, uh, it's it's actually uh, the most important thing. Uh, and and about that, so my first question would be: uh, Let's uh, start with your swing portfolios, maybe. And uh, can you talk about uh, things like? On average, uh, how many positions you have, uh, how you size up, uh, uh, size, size your positions, diversification, and of course, the management of, uh, of, of risk. Yeah, so, um, the, um, so in terms of uh, my long-only portfolio, I try to keep, uh, there are several things I do. And to be honest, uh, I'm a retail trader. I, I am not that good at uh, risk management. Uh, the way I try to do some of that is basically by key, always keeping a big portion of cash aside. Uh, I, I try to make sure that I am not going full 
uh, full uh, long into uh, with no money left on the table at all. Uh, uh, the second thing I do is uh, I would diversify with multiple positions. Um, like they vary between 10 to 20. Um, the, and I, I, I'm able to manage all these because I, in my long only portfolio, I'm doing it on a month, like for many months. I'm expecting, for example, this rally has started to go on for several months. Um, and that way I can keep on managing those. Um, the main things that I look for when risk management is breaking off the trends. The trends that I'm looking for is uh, the volatility trade in trend and the MFR trend. Um, if those break um, and many other things are happening, like the matrix is overbought, momentum is overbought, I try to take profits and reduce my position sizing as well. Um, now, if the position starts to break down heavily you, you know, based on those indicators, based on these trends, and based on um, like my macro signal, uh, basically, I, for example, if my macro subscription says, we think that there's going to be chop or there's going to be um, uh, their signal turns from green to yellow. Um, then we basically uh, try to reduce the positions even further and accumulate cash and uh, wait for the dip uh, to happen. So I'm not doing a lot of beta adjusted strategies, many of the things that many uh, advanced traders would do. Yeah, yeah. No, 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 no. I was not talking about data adjustment for sure. Uh, um, do you have, uh, uh, let's say, r risk limits for a position? For example, your stop can't be more than X or percent or something. Or, or, or you just uh, treat every situation differently? Yeah, yeah. So it is so. I treat every situation differently, obviously, but um, but uh, uh, I talked about my exit strategy when the trends are breaking. In terms of entries, I try to um, uh, build positions slowly instead of going big. Uh, and then number two, I keep an eye on whether, for example, an instrument has gone bullish on the MFR, MFR trend. If it's breaking, it's reverting back and it's breaking the trend again in a heavy fashion and with heavy volume, uh, I, I try to look at whether is this an opportunity to dollar cost average or is it an opportunity to just get out of the position? So um, like, for example, uh, like right now, what we are seeing with Bitcoin is basically um, is, is uh, that it's is breaking down. Uh, now, the question is basically, are we going to wait for it to bounce or are we going I have some positions, but uh, uh, are we going to add to that position or are we going to um, get out of that position? So that's the question. Uh, in macro terms, I'm thinking to wait for the right signal and add more. But if things really start to go bad, uh, I would have to rethink and say that, okay, I have to get out of my existing position as well. Uh, interesting. And uh, I'm assuming for options portfolio, it's basically the same, yeah? From... Options for it is same. Uh, the losses are heavier in the options, mm -hmm. uh, and but the rewards are also heavier. So um, I know some people um, use like a thirty-five percent loss uh, for options or some something like that. I think I I don't put based on that. I look at more the charts. What the chart is telling me, which what are the MFR indicators telling me instead of having a static. Of a percentage loss, which in option systems sometimes does not work. Yeah, yeah, uh, I would agree with because uh, it's um, options and the timing is very important. For example, I uh, it depends on the strategy, but for some strategies, I for example use fifty percent. If if option lost fifty percent of the value, I just get rid of that. But but not always, and not with every strategy. That's for sure. Okay, R Rafael, what's in your on your mind now i think i'm good i mean uh, ragav uh, appropriated uh, the tools uh, the perfect way and again anytime he asks a question anytime we interact with each other on uh, twitter it's uh, it's on, it's spot on 
So actually, I have one uh, idea, and uh, maybe it will be uh, beneficial for our viewers because, of course, the goal, uh, the first goal of these videos is, uh, of course, uh, to show people uh, different approaches and. Uh, uh, what are the different ways of uh, using the tools, managing your portfolios and so on. But uh, also, uh, I think that maybe Raghav, uh, as a long-term user, uh, maybe you have some questions, of course, uh, not about trading, but about the process, the, how each data point interacts with each other. As a long-term user, what, what questions you would have uh, that you may, would think that it would help you use the pro pro process and product better? Um, I think uh, I really love the product that we have right now. Um, the, uh, the There's probably more questions for intraday, I believe, but I think I'm not that big a user for that. Um, so for intraday, I think uh, most of the indicators that we look at have a more meaningful um, indicators on like a daily. And you can break, look, look at one hour, two hour, but I'm talking about like three minutes and five minutes. Probably for those kind of users, uh, they might have different kind of questions. For me, this is all I need. Um, sometimes I miss on a few things. Um, uh, it's the uh, by... The two platforms you have one indicators on the charting platform and then you have the um, the browser um, I used to use browser a lot previously but I have stopped using that much recently because the lot of information is there in the chart itself um, as much information that we can get in the charts even in future that'll be great like uh, for example Hearst like uh, uh, if I want to go and look at the horse signal, do I need to go from a charting platform and go to a browser and see what the host is? Uh, maybe, maybe I do, maybe I don't. Uh, it doesn't change much. So that kind of, uh, I know it's more of a design questions, but those are the kind of questions that I, I have in terms of usability. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a great point. Actually, I tried it to create a Hearst for trading view, and. Uh, uh, I think uh, that forever trading platforms it will be, will be easier. But the biggest issue I had when I wrote all all the code because Hertz takes it's even hard to tell the number. Hertz takes a lot of different calculations into one, and the uh, trading view just crashes. So when I try to run that script, so <laughs> most likely it's at some uh, optimization thing, but uh, that was the biggest problem. When, when I tried to do whatever version of Hearst, and of course I don't want, to, I want it to be exactly like it is on the website because uh, I don't want to simplify it or make it different or whatever. And when I tried to move that to trading view, it was just one of the two uh, scenarios. Either, you know, just a wheel spinning for a minute or so, or it crashes completely. <laughs> so. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, but but most likely the problem is with uh, with uh, some optimization. So, but uh, yeah. it's a good point, and we we are always thinking about that. Yes. Yeah, yeah. I didn't mean to talk specifically about Hurst, but like in, I was thinking more around the having more data on the chart, and it, it doesn't just re uh, reflect to Hurst. Uh, it could be anything. Yeah, yeah. So, right. yeah. Thanks, thanks for everything you do. I know uh, FR keeps on adding so many functionalities. Yeah. Yeah, we, contrary to others, we keep adding and we don't increase cost. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, yeah, so th thank you, Raghav. It's been a, it's been a pleasure and uh, can't wait to see you uh, asking more questions during the next uh, market talks. And uh, have a great, uh, great week trading this market. Thank yeah, you. Th thanks for having yes. me. Thanks and good luck. Bye. Bye.